Hi, and welcome to the Google Cloud and Nokia series on cloudification of telecom provider networks, why now, and how. I'm Ankur Jain, Head of Engineering for Google Cloud for Telecommunication, Edge, and Container Networking. I am Jitin Bhandari, Chief Technology Officer for Cloud and Network Services at Nokia. Let me just start up and paint a bit of a background from a telco standpoint, right? And you know, over the last two decades, I must say it's a little unfortunate that we build layers of complexity in our telco networks. You know, you see these waves of 3G, 4G, and now eventually we're building 5G. Uh, they are still reminiscent of uh, fixed networks and, uh, you know, layers of complexity, both in the network's operations and how we have constructed this network. And here comes two vectors, right? 5G and cloud. Um, 5G promises value creation. Um, before we create any value onto this 5G ecosystem, we must simplify our networks. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, I can't think of a better tool like Cloud Native. Uh, would love to hear your thought of, you know, how the embracing of Cloud Native comes to the hyperscaler world, you know, with the broad landscape beyond telcos that GCP has onboarded. Mm -hmm. What was your experience of Cloud Native and how Cloud Native helped enable simplifications from your perspective? Uh, it's a good question, uh, Jitin. And Quite honestly, like this has been uh, sort of how we have always um, built our services and built our network, whether it is um, um, our uh, consumer services, which then we have several of those which are uh, which have more than a billion users, uh, some which have a few billion users, as well as the underlying infrastructure that supports all of these. We've always built out these services in, if you may, a cloud native way, whether it is um, just making sure that you're using microservices from a development cycle. How do you? How are you uh, ensuring that we are using microservices? We are uh, doing these regular uh, automated testing infrastructure. We are rolling out uh, um, uh, these binaries uh, as well as config on a very regular basis. Uh, we have the right mechanisms for canarying, ro rollback, etc. Like th this is this is, uh, and then how do, um, ensuring that we are getting the telemetry. We are getting. Um, we have the SRE practices, we have these uh, disaggregated platforms. Like this is sort of how we have built all of uh, our infrastructure over the years. I, I feel like, you know, this is, this is home ground for GCP, mm -hmm. you know. I would like to first go on on our chapter one for Cloud Native, which is all about creating platform agnostic networks and operations. And, and this has been a challenge because it's, it's two layered, right? A, the movement of cloud with edge far edges, dis dis disaggregated cloud, as we say it. Um, and then uh, the building of these workloads, which we realized a few years back that needs to be agnostic to sort of in any cloud uh, game plan if you want to give that degrees of freedom and choice of the platform. Do you guys think the same way? You know, when, when you build these ecosystems of platforms, do you see that degree of freedom between the platform and the applications as one telco operator may want, want to think about it? In a setup where uh, a larger ecosystem needs to come together, which is the case in a, in a telecom provider network, um, 5G standards have actually done a really good job. In fact, like there's a lot of great momentum right now happening around uh, opening up some of the interfaces around uh, the RAN side, right? So with these kinds of open specifications, you ca uh, one can end up building out these kind of uh, platform agnostic systems that you're talking about and, um, and creating those sort of like the right abstraction layers wherein you can put together these different building blocks and still have, uh, still manage the complexity back to your previous point and yet get the benefits of cloudification, get the benefits of uh, disaggregation. So let's presume mm -hmm. we get successful in building applications that are truly platform agnostic, use the right cloud native design principles, uh, any cloud segregations, stateless architectures, highly resilient, scalable control plane, data plane, and so on and so forth. The second principles you were alluding to is opening up the networks, the use cases in itself. And you're absolutely right. You know, this time around, if you look at uh, both the standards and the specifications, the way we are opening up the networks, whether accessing that mobility, that location, mm -hmm. that data plane, uh, that policy embedded into the networks. And not only that, 
APIs and SBA or service-based architectures on the operations mm -hmm. and creating to, to the sliceable network as what we call it in 5G is, is enormous. Um, one thing, you know, that I think, you know, we as telcos community uh, will need to come up together and understand from that chapter from the web scalers is how do we create that marketplace? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, what I mean by marketplace, and let me elaborate that, you know, we're doing a lot of ground up work right now with Nokia and some of the leading telco operators as we are dusting off what I call it a ground up building up of an API catalog, mm -hmm. right? Cataloging applications, programmable interfaces at networks level, at operations level, and really giving the power to, to the end developer ecosystem. Um, but I must say that, you know, as a telco industry, we have struggled of creating that value. You know, we've seen that in the 4G era, two vectors, data and mobility. Um, there is still talks about telco missed on that value creation mm -hmm. bus. Uh, this time around, uh, we are more determined, right? Mm -hmm. um, both for operators stand up point of view, if, if investment cycles of 5G has to be about value creation, yes, we are simplifying the networks using cloud native principles, Yes, we are opening up the networks with open APIs. It all converges into the marketplace. What's, what's your viewpoint about that? How, how do we approach this game differently this time around? We are working with pretty much everyone that you can think about, uh, whether it's the, as you were mentioning, whether it is the, uh, the, the silicon uh, players, whether it is um, um, uh, on the RAN side, accelerators uh, that you can think about, whether it, uh, whether it is uh, GPUs, TPUs, we have a very rich ecosystem around building. And by the way, whenever I'm talking about each of these um, uh, components, if you may, uh, there's a rich software ecosystem that uh, is built around each of these. With the, uh, with the clear specifications that have come up with, uh, with 5G standardization, as well as the ecosystem has, as it has now developed around people uh, actually uh, implementing to those uh, open APIs, the ability to now introduce a lot more openness in the ecosystem has come in and uh, definitely to the advantage of our, of our customers and, and, our, uh, and their eventual customers. I absolutely concur with that. And I agree, you know, some of the experiments and some of the successful outings we have done recently, say in the private mm -hmm. network space or private wireless space, specifically for that use case, the amount of ways the ecosystem mm -hmm. have come in from applications from Nokia and enabling mm -hmm. on, on, on a specific, uh, you know, radio capabilities on a specific verticals like mining or mm -hmm. healthcare mm -hmm. has been phenomenal. So, no, this is great. Uh, thank you, Ankur, for your insights. And this has been a fun conversation. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for catching our discussion on cloudification of networks. We'll see you next time in the cloud.